As I mentioned earlier, we are now in the season of Lent. Lent is a time for reflection, a time for meditation, a time when the light seems to dim and the mood seems to become more downcast. Many also see Lent as a time to give up something. Some give up eating meat. Others take time to refrain from caffeine or try to get rid of a bad habit. And none of these things are good unless it helps strengthen your focus on the cross of Jesus. None of these things are beneficial unless it removes ourselves from the equation and the picture to fully rely on Jesus himself. Why do I say this? Because far too often, Lent has become all about what we can do, what we can accomplish, what we can sacrifice, and most, if not all, of the attention is brought to ourselves and taken away from Jesus, the Son of God. For the next five Sundays, we are going to do what the original intent of the Sundays of Lent were meant to do. We are going to zero in on Jesus. All Jesus' accomplishments, 100% Jesus and his gifts to all of us. Jesus gives us so much. That is why for these next five Sundays, our sermon series is called Jesus Gives. And we start with our second lesson today that I just read moments ago, but I would really encourage you to open up to Romans chapter 5 in your Bibles, take your Bible app, your your own Bible if you have it, and open up to Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 12. And we're going to dig deep into these words this morning, these words of Paul. We're going to mine the depths of Scripture and see what he says there. You may be caught when we were going through that second lesson. There's some big words in this section from Paul. Condemnation, justification, disobedience and obedience and what all that means. And so there's a lot going back and forth in this Roman. So it's great to have it opened as we go through this. Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. I'd like to read those words once again. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned, To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command as Adam did, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, How much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made sinners righteous. Zero in now on those first three verses, verses 12 through 14. It's important to note that these first verses of this section focus on the work of a people, our works, our contribution. And isn't that what I mentioned before? Isn't that what a lot of people have put their focus in in Lent? Is on what they can give up, what they can do You do not have to study really in depth here to gather from these words what any of our contribution to salvation is. Through our human race, we have contributed sin. That didn't help with salvation at all. 
As a result of that sin, we have contributed death. That doesn't help in salvation at all. And then, as a result of that death, we have passed down death from generation to generation to generation. That also didn't really help in the plan of salvation. Our contribution doesn't include anything for us to be proud of. Some might argue then, well, that was Adam's contribution. He started it. So thanks to Adam, we are now all sinful and we all now die. To point that is true, but we are not Adam. We are still our own people. We still make our own decisions. We still sin. And we also know that every single one of us is going to die. Every single one of our decisions is going to be tainted with sin. It's going to be tainted with selfishness, greed, pride, fear, or you name it. Sin and death are always running rampant at our door. We contribute to Adam's contribution. Adam's contribution and our contributions are nothing to be proud of. There's nothing we can do better to, to better that reality that death is going to come, that we are sinful, and that all of our other loved ones and friends are going to die too and are sinful. So we need something much more powerful than from ourselves, much more powerful than anything that we can do, much more powerful than anything that we can give up this season or choose to do in Lent. We need a gift. And we need a specific gift. We need a gift from God. Jesus gives that gift in spades. In the next ensuing verses after those first three verses, Paul lays out Jesus' amazing gift to us all, and it's summarized in the word grace. Paul writes in verse 15, But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Jesus gives us so much more than we can contribute. Our contribution is filled with sin, and we know it's always going to result in death. Jesus' gift is grace. And Paul writes, it overflows to the many, it covers, it swallows up the sin and the death that we contributed to it. Our sin is like the coronavirus or the West Nile virus or the Black Plague. It spreads like yeast through the batch of dough. It infects and causes serious diseases and many times results in death. And doctors scramble to find vaccines and medicines to counter the effects, but by the time they come up with those vaccines, it's already too late for too many people. God's grace, on the other hand, was planned beforehand. Grace is proactive, not reactive. God knows we are going to sin, but he has already crafted the plan, as we, met, we read all the way, way back in Genesis 3.15, to counter that sin. That's grace. His counter plan of grace is so much more powerful than the virus of sin. His grace overflows to the many. The Greek word that Paul actually uses here actually states that the grace of Jesus Christ has a superior advantage. In other words, sin has no chance where grace is given. And then Paul goes on in verse 16. Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. There are consequences to sin. Paul reminds us that the result of even just one sin is judgment. And here we see that the judgment sentence is condemnation. So any sin, big or small or otherwise, is 
going to result in condemnation. And condemnation means eternal death, complete separation from God, no love from God at all, absolute pain and suffering, all because of one sin. Jesus gives grace, though. Each sin has condemned us, but even after many of our mistakes, failures, our slip-ups, Jesus gives us grace. And Paul uses the term justification. This courtroom term comes from the word justify. And an, an easy way to remember what justification or to justify means is to just say it slowly. Just as if I had not sinned. Justify. Just if I had not sinned. That's exactly what justification means. Just as if we had not sinned, God declares us not guilty. Even after the many sins, Jesus declares you innocent. Free of all charges. Pardoned. For the sentence of condemnation. Jesus gives grace means that you are forgiven. You will not suffer in eternal hell. You will fully be innocent in God's eyes. And then Paul says in verse 17, For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Death is such a powerful thing. It's final. It's the end. It's dark. And because of sin, Paul reminds us that death reigned in the world. It's the elephant in the room, right? No one wants to talk about death. But everyone knows it's eventually going to happen to everyone. But because Jesus gives grace, because he pours out his abundance of love, death no longer reigns. Death no longer has power. And the victor is the recipient of God's grace. You, dear friends, are the victors. The victors over death. Death no longer reigns. You reign through the holiness, the perfection, and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Jesus giving you this grace means that you stand victorious over the sting of death. Can you believe it? That Jesus giving you grace means this much? But Paul, he's still not done. Look at verse 18. Consequently, just as the result of the one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Life. Jesus giving you grace means life. Death needs to be removed from all our fears, from our vocabulary, from any of our expectations. Jesus has given you grace life. And Paul is not just talking about life in heaven that we need to wait for. He's talking about right now, right here. Jesus has given you life today. Jesus has given you purpose in your life today. Jesus is using your life every step of the way. There's not a second that goes by that Jesus didn't choose for you to take another breath. Jesus gives you that air to breathe. Jesus uses that oxygen in you to give you function and to give you purpose. Jesus brings life to the world for us to see and for us to live and experience. The air you breathe is a gift from God. Jesus giving you grace means life. Life eternal. As much as every second of life is a gift from God on this earth, the eternal resting place he has in store for us is the culmination of, 
of his gift of grace to us. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. The sun will not beat down on us, nor any scorching heat. Those are words that we just studied in our Bible study just this morning. What an amazing gift of grace that Jesus gives to us. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Jesus' gift of grace transforms us from the inheritance of sin and disobedience from Adam into the obedient and righteous through Jesus himself. Paul concludes it with that final contrast here in this final verse of our study today. Adam made us sinners through his disobedience. Jesus made us righteous through his obedience. Jesus is far superior. Where sin increases, Jesus' grace increases all the more. Your life is far more valuable to Jesus than anything death can grab a hold of. Jesus gives grace so that you are victorious in life, so that you are living in his forgiveness, so that you live in his love. Sin will always try to lurk into our lives and try to win out in our lives. But Jesus has already won. The victory of grace has been declared. You are innocent through Jesus Christ because Jesus gives you grace. And he doesn't stop there. Come back or tune in next week to grab a hold of what Jesus gives next. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.